I'd like to discuss rites of passage. And specifically, we don't have to necessarily focus on this, but this this is something that often ends up on my radar of consciousness because I have many males in my audience, and there seems to be a distinct lack of rites of passage for men in most westernized societies or many westernized societies. And I would love for you to describe a chapter in your life, and I'm most certainly going to butcher this pronunciation, but Spatsizi. Oh, Did I yeah. get that right? Yes, yeah, Spatsizi, red goat. Mm-hmm. So could you explain what that is? Rites of passage exist all around the world for a very specific reason. It's not a coincidence or an accident that they involve pain. You know, whether it's scarification, whether it's the, the severing of the foreskin, whether it's the pain of ordeal, the ingestion. I mean, for example, the Algonquin, speaking of Datura, their initiation mm-hmm. rite was to put the young lads in the longhouse, seal it shut, and make them eat Datura for two weeks. Oh, my God. So that they would forget what it was to become boys, to learn what it was to be a man. But the reason mm. all these ordeals that you know so much about, vision quests, etc., mm. have pain is because the message has to be clear. This is the end. It's not about the twiddling of thumbs. We are passing on to you the obligation of adulthood. You now hold the destiny of our people in your hands. This is not trivial. You best be prepared. And I think whether it's with women who go through their own rituals, which are always sort of timed to the first menses or the first period, fertility, transforming a girl into a woman, a potential mother, or it's a boy proving his manhood. Now, this has become rather, you know, frowned upon in our kind of politically correct woke world. But the truth is, young men, I've never known a young lad who didn't want that challenge. It's that idea of proving oneself, not in a gratuitously macho way, but literally in a kind of organic way of grit and courage and strength. And I think that's why. I mean, for example, I've got very close friends in the Navy SEALs, and they all have a kind of a calm confidence because they've been on what Joseph Campbell called the hero's journey. And I think those of us like myself, in you know, brought up in a society that we did not have obvious outlets, we created our own hero's journeys. And for me, it was always either through work or travel, you know. You mentioned Spatsizi. Well, you know, I was living on Haida Gwaii in northwest British Columbia in the mid-70s, and I was very much critical of industrial clear-cut logging, but I felt that I best learned something about it. So I lied about my credentials and managed to hire on as a logging forestry engineer in one of the toughest logging camps in the west coast of British Columbia, where I stayed a year, and I learned everything about the business, including the corruption. And it was a fantastic experience, because I also learned that the men and women fighting off hunger with the chainsaw were not my enemy. Hmm. I learned that in all of these conflicts, particularly around resources, there are never any enemies, only solutions. 